Greetings to another video. Today we're going to be riding Great Dunfell. If you don't know what Great Dunfell is, it is basically classed as the Mont Ventoux of the UK. It is the UK's highest paved road. It stands at 842 metres, so it's pretty high up. And actually, because it is that high, the weather that you get up there is sometimes very, well, most of the time, is very different to what you've got down here. The stats, it is 7.3 kilometres long. It averages at 13.8% and I think the maximum it reaches is about 19%. Uh, it is absolutely stunning. I've done it a few times. Great climb, I'll leave a link to my Strava so you can have a look at it and look at all the grades and stuff. Let's get going. Right, let's get into all the data. So yeah, actually just very quickly, the segment just started after the lay-by, uh, but yeah, let's get into the data. So as you can see on the top left, we've got cadence. Then we've got my speed and then heart rate. I did finally wear the heart rate monitor. Um, and then we've got my watts on the bottom left. And then on the bottom right, we've got the gradient. Then above that is the actual um, segment of Great Dunfell. So because the segment is like 7.3K long, I've actually obviously chopped this down quite a lot. Um, just so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. But at least there you can just kind of just keep checking on where I am if you want to obviously um where i am on the actual segment itself so yeah this climb is absolutely phenomenal i'm saying that even before well you'll see in a minute how incredible it is um but yeah i absolutely love it so yeah so the first section of this is just quite a very it's just a very straight just kind of steady gradient road there are a couple of houses either side of it and um, but then you literally get up into the middle of moorlands it's incredible so yeah again just on this steady flat bit i say flat it's seven percent it just feels flat in comparison so i mean look at that view behind so the actual climb itself is just literally just um a single road up and a single road back so you're not going to get any cars i well i've never seen any cars up there anyway um so yeah it is really good if you did want to go and uh give it a, a blast up there because it's just it's great there are a couple of gates sometimes that you have to uh, uh, climb around so just be careful of those as well um, and now you can see like how long the sections are for like there's like 16 17 percent sections for quite a long period of time uh it's quite steep so it's definitely definitely a challenge of a climb um because it's just so long and so steep for so many long sections of that so yeah 7.3k the average is 8.6 percent however there is a quite a, a considerable chunk of that that's kind of flat and a bit downhill so if you took that section out i think the average well the average would be a lot higher so just be prepared that there are some very fairly long steep sections in it but look how stunning that is it's just oh, i just love this climb so much um so yeah also as well the it says that the top gradient is around 20 percent. i think it says 19.8 percent. so like let's say 20 percent. so yeah um we were actually really lucky the day we went up the weather was so nice and i guess obviously got the lovely sunlight on the walls i love those um stone walls i love them absolutely love them but yeah this is an again another little section of like 12 13 14 percent but look how lovely i mean the, the road service is actually really good um so yeah it is definitely one if you want to go and give it a give it a blast up there but also you've got to be careful because they are i don't actually know what they call are they snow basically the snow measuring poles is that the correct term i don't think it is uh, but yeah they just basically measure how snow it gets up there oh, basically you can just see how much snow there is because it does get pretty pretty changeable up there as you'll see later on in this video so i'll talk about the bike and the gear setup that i've got um, i'm using the ribble sl and i've actually got a compact crank on the front and i've actually got a 40 cassette on the back uh, which is what i love to use to climb steep long climbs like this uh, the actual um climb itself is in a little village called knock which is in cumbria and yeah it is just the highest 
paved road, I think in the UK, it's definitely in England, I think it's the highest paved road in the UK as well, it's about 800, it's 842 metres, and then at the very top is a civil aviation authority, it's an air traffic control radar station, it just looks like a big giant massive golf ball, um, but yeah. So this is the flat kind of downhill section as well, so that is, just be prepared for that, so yeah. Nice little bit of rest there, to be honest. So yeah, I'm coming up to, what, three quarters of the climb done? I'm just having a little rest. A little break. But look at this, like this is one of my favorite, favorite sections. So after you've done that downhill bit, this is when you start really getting up into just, into just how open this is. But look at that, like how amazing is that? I just think it looks so untouched. Also, one thing that I do need to mention is if you are coming up, be aware that there are rogue sheep knocking around. One of my friends actually came off because the sheep ran out. I just think the sheep, because there's not many people that go up or go down it, just aren't used to seeing cars and aren't used to seeing cyclists and people. So, I mean, I know sheep run out anyway, but just be really careful that that is a potential danger on the way up or down, I guess. But yeah, definitely on the way down. Just just, just, just be aware that there, are, there might be some sheep. Um, yeah, so, as this kind of gets higher up, you see now it is starting to get a little bit windier, a little bit chillier, and it is getting a little bit misty. I love it. So yeah, the, the first time I ever went up this was on a 300k Audax. I'd never even heard of this before, and this Audax, I would definitely recommend you, if you want to challenge, it's called, I think it's Knock Von 2, because this climb is classed as the, the Mont Von 2 of the UK. Um, yeah, Mont Von 2, sorry, Knock Von 2 300, so yeah, it's 300k, and the day we went up, it, it, it was actually really clear, it's always, it generally is always windy at the top, uh, because it's so high up, yeah, again, 800 and something metres, but yeah, on that day we had, it was really clear visibility, not like this day, so as you can see now, it is, the, look at the wind, like look at my hair, it, it, it's, it got cold, so again, sounding very responsible but yeah always take a spare jacket because it can get really cold up there so just be prepared that the weather is so changeable up there it is ridiculously changeable you saw how still and how warm and sunny it was at the bottom and this is what you get near the top but it's a cracking climb like it's like look 10 12 percent incredible so yeah i guess the thing what i would also say is take lights we stupidly didn't take lights with us. And I did debate, do I even show this? Because I feel like I'm gonna get a bit of criticism for it and rightly so. Uh, but I decided to share it just to be like, I I didn't do it, but I want to show you this. This is how much it can change. So I just don't want you to be unprepared like I was because even though I knew it gets windy and stuff at the top, I didn't expect it to be misty at the top. And when you're doing something like this, you need to be prepared for whatever because you are going higher up. So just be careful, learn from that mistake. Um, yeah, that's one of the gates there that I've just got off and, and climbed around. So yeah, please just don't be an idiot like me. Take lights. Um, on the way down, we were really careful. Um, and obviously there's no, well, I've never seen cars up there, but I guess the potentially th there might be. So just learn from my stupid mistake of not taking lights so yeah we are getting up towards the end now yeah it is so messy visibility is not great and also as well there are a couple of cattle grids as well so just be really careful on them because they can, they can get really wet especially when it's kind of misty like this they do get like a little bit of damp on them so yeah just be really careful of that as well and i i do recommend like if you want to challenge you go and do this climb but just be aware that these are some of the things that are going to happen it might get really windy up there it will it pretty much 99 times out of 100 it's it's going to be windy up there so yeah just be just be very careful just be prepared for it it's just incredible though i really i know i keep saying it but i just think it's just an incredible very unique climb so yeah, we are literally getting to the end of it now. So I'll just very quickly tell you my end stats. I had, I did it in 39, 29, 39 minutes, 29 seconds. The average was 238 watts and my average heart rate was 172. 
yeah, and that now is pretty much the top. You can't even see the actual um, control radar, but yeah, it's just a big giant golf ball. When it starts getting this misty, please let this be the warning. If you ever come up here, that's how much it can change from the bottom to the top.